All right, morning folks. Wanted to walk you through something that we've done over the last year and started again this year. Uh, it's not chickens. Chickens is something we did starting this year, but I wanted to walk you through a little bit of how we raised quail last year and we're doing it again this year as well. We actually just had uh, the quail hatch. Probably saw some of that in the intro video. But I wanna go back to a little bit of footage and, and photos and stuff we took over the last year to show you how you could start raising quail from hatching eggs all the way to harvesting eggs and harvesting birds. And so well, the first thing we did was we went and got chickens, uh, excuse me, we went and got an eggs from uh, someone here locally, put those into the incubator and uh, I'll let Julie and the kids walk you through the process of putting them in the incubator and the time and the humidity and all that stuff now. It's our first time using our incubator. What are we trying to hatch today, kiddos? Quail. Quail. So we're putting the eggs of the quail in the incubator. How many eggs? 20. 20? 20. 20? Yeah. Okay, maybe. Um, and then 14 days or so to hatch. Is that right? 17 days. 14, 17 days. So we'll be in there. And I think we're ready to put it on. Let me take that from you, Mom. And you put the incubator on. Okay. All right, so, excuse me, Hudson. This is looking good. And I have to put it back on. So we're lining up this dome with these notches. We didn't get to see if there was anything forming any of the eggs. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll try that probably a little bit later. Once they've been in here a little bit, we're gonna put the egg here. You can turn on a light, it'll shine through it, and you can see if there's activity in there. So now it's pretty much set, but I am going to reset the timer once more because it was set yesterday. So I'm going to hit menu and minus. Now I'm going to hit menu and I'll say D21. And then we're going to say it's good to go. So it's going to be 21 days because they can hatch anywhere between 17 and 23 days. So we want to leave it on for at least 23 days to give them all time to hatch. But at 14 days, we're going to turn off the, t the turner, which means we'll unplug this back here that's connected to the turner, and we will take out this yellow tray because that'll give the, the little babies more room to hatch when they're moving around. They won't get stuck on these yellow prongs. And, they, and also they, get, they can see their brothers and sisters, yes. big brothers and small sisters. But these are in here because this whole thing will turn every so often and it'll just kind of do a little shift to kind of turn the eggs over a little bit. Because the bottom is the hot part? Yes, that's the warmer part. So I guess there's some science to them moving. So I think this is it, guys. We're just going to set it. We're going to monitor humidity. We need humidity between 45 and 55. So right now it needs to come back up and it needs to be at 99.5% degrees so it needs to come back up because we had the lid off for a little bit and that's it and we'll add water with this see this water in here guys see where it is mm -hmm. it needs to stay at that level if it goes lower then we add water and it feeds into the middle to create the right humidity you know one of the cool things about doing quail like from eggs all the way through hatching and raising and things is bringing the whole family along bringing the kids along in particular um, I don't know if we mentioned it before, we'll probably do a number of videos, but we are homeschooling our kids and so that was part of it all last year. And one thing, it's one thing to read about, um, you know, birds or animals hatching and things like that from a textbook and it's another thing to see life coming out of an egg and that was awesome for us to see last year as a family. I ate it. Sorry. I think I saw it. Hey, 
Let me just look like. I'm on camera. Wait, wait. Am I on camera? <laughs> yeah. Cool. Hey. Yeah, you on camera. Hey, it's moving. Is it? Just take like a picture of him. We'll be satisfied just talking in our head. Really, I like the chance that it didn't come out before we have to leave. Take me. Oh, I know. We gotta get these little suckers out. I think we just gotta go for it. Well, with that one, it's tricky. Because like, you know. once it comes out, you don't want to transfer it right away. It's gotta hang uh -huh. out. There it goes. There it goes. Come on, buddy. Come on, home run, buddy. Come on, buddy. He's like, but somebody keep. Push. I'm in a disadvantaged position now. Oh, hey. Come on, push him over. Help him out. Push him, your push him back over. Yeah. Hey, hey. I'm a big brother. I have a big cheeky butt. <laughs> Bitch, but it's just mom, buddy. I just need to win with her. Come on, it's me. Hyper anxiety mode. Oh, come back. Hey, <laughs> hey, is this where the action is? Hey, <laughs> mom. He's moving his body from side to side. He's like, hey. <laughs> well, I'm videoing this on a whim because this brooder box has been on my mind for days and days and days. This is our first quail brooder box. We've got our water feeder in there, our heat lamp, somewhat jimmy rigged, and our food with our feeder right there. So, yes, this is my masterpiece. Gary helped me with it. The kids are going to help me finish it. We'll probably put some like uh, wood shavings on there when we get them. Hopefully they hatch. That would be amazing. You know, after we had them hatched and in the brooder box for a little bit of time to let them get older, another thing that was awesome to do as a family is actually build the quail pen that they would live in while they're outside. So that was a wood shop project with my son and my daughter, figuring out how we're gonna build it, what the cages are gonna be like, what the watering system is gonna be like. And so that was all super important to not only teach them a few things, but for us to learn how to, to raise those animals together. Hi. Hi. This is our quail coop. Okay, love it. Tell me about it. Um, Doors. Yes. Door number one and door I'm sorry, we'll, we'll fix that. Door number two. Nice. And this is mesh. Uh -huh. This bottom. And this is the bottom. Uh -huh. And these are the walls. Love that. We will continue. We will, <laughs> we will continue the flooring. This. Yeah. Uh, the bot. The, this square at the bottom. This square at the side and the roof. And the doors later. Yep, hold some and weight. I don't think our quail are heavier than that. I don't think any quail will be heavier than this. Let's see, where are the quail? Oh, they're outside in their little tub. Come on. One of the hardest things uh, that we learned in raising quail was not what feed to use and how to grind it up and how much water they need and those kind of things or even how to build the pen and set up the watering system although those were challenges uh had to do some research and, and figure that out but some of the harder things were for the kids in the full life cycle of i mentioned earlier getting the eggs seeing life happen the kids being up at two three four o'clock in the morning trying to watch them hatch all the way through raising them uh, in some ways this could have been a mistake, but the kids ended up naming them, almost treating them as pets, and not a big deal if you're just using the chicks and the quail for eggs, but we were going to use them and did use them for meat as well. So that full life cycle from birth to death, and a lot of people have opinions about maybe eating meat or hunting and raising animals and things like that, that that's your prerogative, but we eat meat and I think it's actually very healthy for not only my wife and I to get closer uh, to the land, closer to our food, uh, but for the kids to do that as well early on in their life, to understand that if you're gonna eat meat, something's gonna die, and to, to not outsource that to someone far away 
And so that was a lesson, hard lesson. There's some tears and some sadness there, but actually that's just part of life. It's part of human life. That's part of animal life. If you're going to eat meat, something's going to die. And to have that experience uh, was quite beneficial for us to have here at home. And again, we're going to have it um, here in the next two weeks, three weeks uh, with the chickens. And of course, as we, we hunt and fish throughout the summer and fall. So just another lesson, uh, almost in the homeschool kind of curriculum, if you will, just how do we help ourselves and teach our children again to live closer to the land and, and closer to nature, something that's very important to us.